Hi, Kane. Uh, the shorter quarters, we know it's having an impact across the board, but is it specifically hurting a way the teams are scoring and setting up forward of the ball? Yeah, I think it's hurting the two-pronged genuine key forwards in attack. And I want to take a look at some of the best duos in the forward line and what they've delivered so far in the season. Kennedy and Darling ineffective for West Coast. Fogarty and Walker, we know their struggles. Rewalt and Lynch, Rewalt in particular, really struggling, as is Jeremy Cameron and Finlayson at the Giants as well, two players who were dominant last year. So I think the new blueprint is what Collingwood delivered, not only for their uh, how dangerous they can be to hit the scoreboard here, but also the way that they're pressuring sides. So I love Majacek playing as the key. I think Dugowie plays taller than what we give him credit for. And then you surround them with these guys, Elliot, Stevenson, Brown, Dacos. I just think this could be the blueprint, a little bit like what Richmond have done prior to what, when Tom Lynch got there, and, and this is maybe the way that we go, and this is what other teams may be watching pretty closely this year. Lloydy is our resident forward. Do you agree with Kane's assessment? Uh, I can fully understand where he's coming from, but no, because I, I think Brody Majacek, I wouldn't trust him just to be there tall and everyone else smalls around him. Take a look at Brody's record in, in obviously finals. He's had 11 disposals, averages one goal, had a really poor final series last year. Two of his worst games have been in finals in terms of ranking points. And I just think last year when you've got Richmond, you can go long down the line to Lynch, long down the line to Revolt. Come finals, the game becomes a bit more contested, not as free-flowing. And I think having two big talls is really important. But there's a few sides that Kane highlighted there yeah. that were failing that we wouldn't be expecting to. Is there a side that you can think of, Lloydy, that goes yeah. against his theory? Yeah, I love what I heard from David Teague on uh, Melbourne Radio today where he spoke about the plan they went down to with three talls against the Geelong Footy Club about isolating the backs from Geelong. Let's, let's take a listen to what David had to say and how it worked with the vision behind it. We went down to Geelong. We really wanted to isolate the defenders and keep them one-on-one. -on -one. And, and to do that, you need the, the three, particularly the three tools to, to keep apart. And I thought they did that really well. And we saw the results. And this week, it was probably more Levi that, that took the marks. But next week, hopefully, it'll be Harry or Mitch. And they'll work as a, as a group rather than looking at their own stats. I'll look at the, the group and see how they function as, as a three. The mobility of three Carlton tools is really good too. And the big question is Mason Cox. You know, it's... Yeah, it's hard to know what to do. I, I, I hope he comes through because I think Collingwood need him uh, come finals time, but others are disagree. So I'm interested to see now David Teague has said that and put the, that on the agenda, what the opposition yeah. do. If they know that those three want to isolate yeah. and separate, will the opposition come up with a plan that won't allow them to do that? So I don't think we get carried away just yet with yeah. one Carlton win. We'll wait and see how it they... It comes down to ball the movement, future. doesn't yeah. it? And the midfield was on top. Before we move on from Carlton, can we just highlight Eddie Betts and that match-saving tackle and the, over Henry against Henry and the game he had after the week he'd had. He was not only obviously suffered another racist slur, but he'd also been questioned for his age and Carlton had been questioned for the decision to recruit him. Um, I, I can't think of a player more loved in the game at the moment and I just loved the dying seconds of that game, Sam, but probably not as much as you did. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't mind. <laughs> I thought Eddie Betts turned himself into Fraser Brown those last 30 seconds with that tackle on Henry. But uh, he, he does so much culturally for that group, um, you know, particularly for the likes of Jack Martin, who's learning so much from him, that they're, they're really happy for him. It's... And Adelaide still say he exaggerated the camp. It's a joke. Go ahead. I don't think anyone at the Adelaide Football Club would say that with a straight face now, would they carry? Anyway, we move on. We're not going to get <laughs> bogged down uh, in the camp. Lloyd, you were part of an interview on 3AW on the weekend with a great Lee Matthews, had some fascinating comments. You guys are talking about whether two-prong forwards are the way forward. Is it to do with that or potentially the talent? It's early days in this season, we know that, but there's very few marks being taken inside 50. Don't we yearn for a forward who can take four or five contested marks or four or five marks and have four or five shots at goal? All the big forwards just can't find the ball. Right now we've got a bunch of second-rate key forwards. No, I think the problem is, Sam, it's not that they're second rate, in my opinion. It's the way the coaches are asking them to be played. And I think that... I remember when Franklin was flying, Clarko says, we can't have Franklin being the P here. Mm. Then Hardwick was under Clarkson. He gets to Richmond. We can't have Jack Revolt being the man here. And I reckon we've turned back the clock here with the King brothers. Uh, ben and Max. Ratton and Jew have actually said to them, Sam, 
you can go to the goal square and they play permanently out of the goal square and just hit up hard. It's great to see us turn back time a little bit and we might see someone kick 60 or 70. They might do it for the next 10 years, these two. They were uh, both incredible on the weekend, both in patches. And uh, Caro, and Lloyd, it's, Caro and Kane, it's no wonder that Lloydie's bringing up these two, given well, we know who coached him. I want to ask, ask Lloydie about this, and I, I don't like to speculate because Gold Coast is so happy with what, and Saints, what, what each of them are doing. Can they those two play in the same side, and is it a motivating factor for them, having you known and dealt with them? Where they're very, they were St Kilda supporters growing up, so that's where the Saints hold hope of, of having uh, them both there. But... Um, they don't get in each other's way and they have an amazing ability. I grew up idolising the Cracker Brothers. Mm. That ability to know where each other are, they are very good and they get out of each other's way. Ben liked to be the higher forward, which he's been deeper at the Suns, and Max is your stand and deliver dominant power forward. So they, they know each other's games really well and play really well together. So I think one day they'd like to do that, but they both love their clubs, mm. which is great for, for Suns and St Kilda. There's no doubt the expectation from St Kilda is that Ben will play and finish his career at the Saints. No doubt whatsoever. Mm. It's going to be a big fight and Ben's on big money as he's been re-signed at the Gold Coast Suns. They won't be letting him go, but uh, that one, Kane, watch will this yeah, watch this space in yeah. the trade period. Don't